A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. We're going to go to Peter Abetz now, the ACL Director for WA, and he joins us on the line now. Peter, welcome. Good morning, Andrew, and good morning, listeners. Peter, lots going on uh, in Australia at the moment. Uh, let's talk about the, the protests over the weekend, the, uh, the, the pro-Palestine uh, protests. Yeah, look, I think it's very, very disturbing to see what's been happening there because what the pro-Palestine demonstrators just don't seem to be able to comprehend or don't want to uh, face is the fact that Hamas and Hezbollah their very purpose for existence is to eliminate uh, Israel because they maintain that Israel has absolutely no right to existence and therefore their aim is to annihilate Israel. And the reality is, like even when Penny Wong says, we want de-escalation, you can't de-escalate anything when somebody's out to kill you. That's the bottom line. And until Hamas and Hezbollah are uh, eliminated... Um, Israel really has no no um, has doesn't have any opportunity to live in peace. Yeah, and as I said in the introduction today, nearly a hundred of the people who were killed last year on October seventh were foreign nationals who just happened to be working in Israel. There were Filipinos, there were Nepalese, there were people from all over the world who just happened to be caught up in it, and they were also murdered by these terrorists. So these terrorist groups, Hezbollah and Hamas, they don't care. Who happens to be in front of them? Like you said, their end justifies their means. And if you happen to be in their way, they'll uh, they'll take you down as well. I think they've killed over, um, Hezbollah's killed almost 250 Americans. I think 230 of those were U.S. Marines in the uh, that base in Lebanon. Do you remember in the early 80s, a truck bomb oh, was yes. exploded? And, and those, those weren't Jewish. They were Americans stationed in Lebanon trying to be a peacekeeping force. So you're right, these are terrorist groups. Uh, they're not nice people. And... It's really hard to fathom, isn't it, that some Australians are actually marking, marching on the streets to support them? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it just beggars belief. And I mean, um, I saw an interview one time where at one of the university pro-Palestine rallies, they had a, um, uh, were chanting from the river to the sea. And a journalist asked this uh, young lady, uh, do you know what that means? And she looked at a friend and the friend looked at her and they had no idea what it means. And um, the from the river to the sea, that chant base is the slogan that the uh, Hamas and uh, Hezbollah use for eliminating uh, Israel. So, um, yeah, you know, and and then they go on about Israel committing genocide. Well, hang on a minute, who's committing trying to commit genocide? It's it's just ridiculous. It's it, it's such a uh, an abusive language to refer to Israel as engaging in genocide. It's just ridiculous. Well, it's reminiscent of Goebbels in World War II, the German propaganda mm. minister who would, you know, uh, sp- spill this sort of information as well via the radio. And it was sort of viewed as comedy by the Allies. But the sad thing is today we have people here in our democracies spitting out the same type of propaganda. And as you said, it's gaining traction amongst the ignorant or the useful idiots like those young girls who... They, they, they like the idea of, uh, you know, removing an oppressor. They like the idea of removing a colonizing power. And they've been um, brainwashed. It's not even brainwashing. It's, it's more simple than that. They've just believed slogans which say that the Israelis are the occupiers and the colonizers and they have to be removed. And the young and dumb are jumping on board the bandwagon and, uh, and joining in these protests. Yeah. And I think, you yeah, know, when uh, it, the, the, the same, uh, it's mainly left wing uh, people who are into this. Um, when you actually think about the fact that the Jewish people, uh, it's their original homeland. So if anyone is a coloniser, it's in fact the, the Arab world that came in uh, and took over that land. Uh, the Ottoman Empire, if you like, was the coloniser. Um, and so when in 1948, Israel was established uh, by a United Nations uh, decree or decision, um, that was, in a sense... Uh, giving them back some of their homeland. Yeah, well, they're the most indigenous group I'm aware of in the world. They've got a book thousands of years old which <laughs> documents the, the the time they occupied the land. And and like I said, it, it beggars belief. It, but it's sad because 
you know, I've never seen anti-Semitism like I'm seeing now all around the world, including in Australia, definitely in Israel. I mean, we read about it in World War II and you, you shake your head and go, how could it happen? How could a sophisticated, you know, techno- technologically advanced nation like Germany reach the point where they killed six million people from a, non- a minority group? And uh, But here we are. It just feels like that anti-Semitism has ramped up again and it's it's sprung its ugly head all around the world, including here on our shores, Peter. But I want to move on to the Albany Library issue where sexually explicit books uh, were made accessible to children. Tell me about the update on that, please. Yeah, look, basically there was a, a group of parents in uh, Albany who... Uh, and for those who don't know, Albany is a, um, a town on the south coast of Western Australia. Um, it's, uh, it's a lovely town, a very strong sense of community. Um, and some of the parents uh, raised concerns about the fact that there were sexually explicit books, uh, supposedly sex education type books, uh, in the young children's section of the library. And um, I think any parent would agree that uh, sexually explicit uh, books with pictures in it of people engaging in various sexual activities uh, is not appropriate for, say, primary school age children. And um, so it uh, became uh, an issue. And also there was a uh, one of the other problems is that e-books are accessible to anyone who has a library card. And there are some very uh, graphic uh, sexually explicit books which children can also access uh, if they've got a library card. And uh, so the parents said, look, these books really should be sent to the Australian Classification Board for classification because they really should be, in those parents' views, only available for people, say, over 16 years of age, that type of thing. And the other issue that was uh, going on was that uh, a twerking workshop, which was part of the uh, Pride Week celebrations down there, uh, which and that was uh, partly funded by the City of Albany. It was advertised as being for all ages initially, and uh, that was uh, uh, yeah. A lot of parents thought that was totally inappropriate. Um, and for those who don't know twerking, uh, I hadn't heard that term before either. But I looked it up. It's it's a, a, a form of dance which is very sexual. Um, and uh, so the parents said, look, the council needs to think carefully before they fund things. And uh, if they do fund them, they also need to say uh, what's age appropriate or what age it's for rather than say for all ages. So it was uh, yeah, a collection of these uh, three, four things. And uh, the they didn't feel they got the action they wanted from the uh, city and so they gathered the 300 signatures that were needed uh, from ratepayers to call a special electors meeting, and that was held on the 26th of August. And uh, would you believe it was attended by 420 people? Uh, that's not bad for a small town. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they passed the motions and so on. And uh, the council, by law, has to consider the motions that were passed at a special electors meeting at their next council meeting. And they've done that and they've rejected all of them. So uh, there was a, quite some consternation about that. But um, one of the consequences of all of this has been that the whole issue of sexually explicit books in libraries is actually the talking point in just about every local government area in Western Australia now. And uh, some councils um, are actually taking action and taking those books and putting them at a height where children cannot reach them um, and uh, putting a notice, uh, uh, parental guidance recommended, all that kind of thing. So uh, there's been some good outcomes. Yeah, but you're saying that the the council in the end actually rejected all of the... um the proposals to get rid of these books off the shelves actually said no to it regardless. Yeah, well, see, the uh, the media, um, they kind of portrayed it as people wanting books banned, but nobody asked for books to be banned. That wasn't the motion at all. None of the motions asked for anything to be banned. It was asking for them to be taken out of the young children section and for certain books to be sent to the classification board for um, for assessment as to what ages they should or where they should be restricted to particular age, you know above a certain age. Um, so the 
um, the, one of the things that the city did do was uh, that they did that already to their credit uh, before the meeting took place. Uh, they took uh, one of the books out of the children's section and put it in the young adult section. So uh, that was a positive outcome. Yeah, there well. was there was an outcome. Yeah, that's good. And I guess just another example of people power and um, and mm-hmm. the ACL also. You partnered with that group, didn't you, to uh, to expose this problem? So well done to the ACL. Yeah, look, I keep children safe. Albany uh, was certainly the they were the uh, initial drivers of it, and uh, our our uh, volunteers got behind it and uh, helped to yeah, bring about change. And I think the fact that this has um, brought about a, uh, a rethink by a lot of local governments about their books, I think is really positive. One of the uh, interesting things that arose from this was that uh, one of the, the member for Albany um, uh, did a, what they call a grievance motion in, in uh, Parliament and the minister responsible uh, used inappropriate language to describe one of the councillors who uh, was actually supportive of the, the community group. And um, yeah, it caused a bit of a kerfuffle in the, in the media, but it all served to draw attention to the whole issue. Um, and Councillor Bruff, uh, who uh, is also the Liberal candidate for Albany in the forthcoming election in March, um, was totally inappropriately attacked by Rebecca Stevens and uh, and um, uh, by a Minister Templeman, and again that was uh, that kind of put the issue onto page three of the West Australian, which you know things happening in Albany don't always make the front page or the page three of the West Australian newspaper. So uh, it's it's all served to come together to to really put this issue on the map and for local governments to be thinking it through and taking action. Yeah, but isn't it sad that? Yeah, the Bible talks about a perverted or a deranged mind. When people give themselves over to sin, that their mind becomes deranged. Like to think that it's okay for a child to learn how to twerk, like you said, it's a very sexual uh, dance uh, for all ages, that this is okay for all ages. The people who thought this was okay to put this on the shelves of a children's section of a library, it's just deranged, isn't it, Peter? It's not the way that we should be raising children. Hello. Yeah, we lost Hello? you for a second there. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm back in. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I was just saying that it's not the way uh, kids should be arranged, but the people behind this, their minds have obviously become so perverted and so deranged that they think it's okay for small children to learn how to do a sexual dance. Mm. And look, I think yeah, we've had a Senate inquiry. We've had the um, into the sexualization of children. The Children's Commissioner here in Western Australia uh, issued a report of uh, reviewing this, you know, the, the literature on uh, the issues that arise from sexualization of children. And the evidence is very clear that sexualizing children actually makes them more susceptible to abuse and it also ha- leads to mental health issues for many children. So this whole thing of trying to sexualize children is something that any rightful thinking person that you don't have to be a, a Christian to think this, but any person who has genuine concern for the well-being of children uh, should be strongly uh, opposed to this whole push to sexualize our children. Yeah, well, any parent would think like that. But uh, yeah, anyway, well, well done again to the ACL. I do want to move on here so that your Minister for Health in WA continues to falsely assert that the CAS review has no relevance to WA uh, gender clinics. Now, let's just remind our listeners what the CAS review is, please, Peter. Yeah, look, the CAS review was um, emerged from uh, the UK, where after a court case uh, where a girl sued the National Health Service because of um, yeah regret of having gone through the puberty blockers, cross sex hormones, double mastectomy, she sued the National Health Service, and the judge made the comment uh, that he was appalled at the total lack of evidence to support the treatment that this girl had received and so the Minister for Health uh, in the UK, in the uh, yeah, Conservative Government, commissioned uh, Dr Cass to do a review of it all, uh, of this whole gender treatment um, for children suffering from gender dysphoria and uh, it was a four year project um, they thought it would take 12 months end up taking four years and basically the result of the review was that 
the claims that are made about the benefits of putting kids on puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones um, is just simply not there. It's, um, uh, it really showed that the so-called consensus was a confected consensus uh, where activist people keep quoting each other and that way they generate a sense that everybody agrees, but there's actually no scientific basis for it. And for example, the claim that if you don't um, affirm a child in their chosen gender, they're very likely to commit suicide. There's actually zero evidence to support that claim. And yet that's what's used to bully parents into allowing their children to uh, go onto puberty blockers and so on, because they're told, you know, do you want a dead son or or a living daughter or vice versa? And uh, so that's been uh, a real issue. Now, the interesting thing was that Dr. Cass actually also uh, reviewed the treatment process that's used in the Royal Children's Hospital, uh, which is basically what's called the OSPATH. That's the Australian uh, Society for, uh, Association for Professional uh, Gender Health uh, sort of people. And uh, it's based on the world, uh, the WPATH uh, treatment protocols. And basically she she gave the treatment process that's used, or uh, the evidence base, for the treatment that's uh, given to the Royal Children's Hospital, a rating of 19 out of 100, which uh, is not a very good evidence base to be treating kids on. And every gender clinic in Australia basically uses the same protocol. They look to uh, the Royal Children's Hospital and uh, for how to do, how to go about it. And it's generally referred to as gender affirmation approach, where no matter what's going on in a child's life, uh, if a child says, I want to be a say, a boy wants to be a girl or vice versa, you affirm them in that and anything other than affirming them is basically viewed as child abuse. And that is just an appalling uh, uh, treatment process when uh, the, the evidence is showing now that uh, yeah, the vast majority of children actually outgrow the desire to be a different gender. And uh, by the time they finish puberty, uh, something like 98% of boys outgrow the desire to be a girl and uh, the girls wanting to be boys, uh, it's usually about 85%. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, why would you put a child on a lifelong path of medicalization when if you uh, give them some psychological support uh, through puberty, uh, by the time they get out of puberty, they're, they're, they're quite happy being their biological sex. Yeah, well, we saw that uh, Chloe Cole, that American young lady who you brought out, who the ACL brought out, she has that exact same story you've just described there, that her parents were basically mm. pressured into signing off on this operation because they were pressured into believing that she may commit suicide if they didn't allow her to change her gender. And just to remind our listeners, if you didn't hear that interview, uh, in the end, she ended up having her breasts removed to become a boy. She changed her name and she took all these um, steroids and grew facial hair, and then at the age of 17 decided, I don't want to be a man anymore, I want to be a woman. Mm. She's now 20 years old and is facing the reality that she wants to be a mum one day. She's not even sure if her body will produce a child, and if it does, she obviously doesn't have the parts of a female body that you use to nurture and feed young babies. Mm. It's, 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 a, it's an example of child abuse. This legislation, this narrative about changing a, a child's gender is, I believe, a, a form of child abuse. And it's, you mm -hmm. know, well done to the UK government that they've actually got a common sense decision here, and it's known as this CAS review. But it's mind-boggling that the government of WA, among others, is rejecting the finding of this CAS review, Peter. Yeah, look, it is. And it's interesting, in the UK, um, with the change of government uh, to Labor, the Labor minister has continued the ban on the use of puberty blockers by the National Health Service and they've also banned it for uh, private practice because they say it's just there's, just there's not the evidence to support its use and some activists in the UK took this situation to court um, and the uh, British High Court ruled that on the basis of the evidence from the CAS review, uh, the minister was uh, yeah, acting responsibly by banning the use of puberty blockers and yet uh, here in Australia and here in Western Australia uh, the ministers for health say no the cash review has no relevance to Australia because we do things differently but they still use exactly the same puberty blockers which are banned now in the UK uh, and in uh, quite a number of countries 
uh, because that simply isn't the evidence base to support their use. Yeah, and they use the same narrative and the same mythical belief that uh, it's dangerous to a child's well-being if they're not allowed to change their gender at a young age. And as you said, there's no scientific evidence to support that narrative. It's uh, it's very sad for Australia, isn't it? But the good news is some of your supporters have been visiting state MPs to inform them of the contents of the CAST review, and they're calling for an inquiry into the WA gender clinics. Is there any traction there? Is there any progress there? Yeah, look, um, the uh, the Labor MPs, obviously they refer, the, 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 after meeting they refer it to the Minister for Health for advice and the Minister for Health sends a standard letter out to say that, um, yeah, it's totally irrelevant, the CAST review, it has no bearing on WA because we do things differently, which is just simply not true. They use the puberty blockers, we've got the numbers through um, uh, of how many children, etc. So, I mean, it's definitely happening here. And the reality is, uh, my view is that the state is actually leaving itself wide open to lawsuits in the future uh, because now there's clear evidence that it's harm. the puberty blockers are harmful to children and yet they continue to be used and parents pressured into um, allowing their children to go onto these uh, puberty blockers uh, and going down that path. Um, and yet uh, the reality is the evidence is there to say that this is harmful. So I can see people um, who regret having gone down that path uh, suing the West Australian government in the future. Wow. Well, you know, again, well done to the ACL. And if Peter, P want to get involved in this, maybe they're in WA right now and they want to add their weight, the best place to begin would be your website, ACL dot org dot au that's acl dot org dot au peter abetz is the wa director for the australian christian lobby in wa and peter thank you so much for this update i know there was another issue there we want to touch on but we've run out of time property rights but uh, i want to thank you for joining us today once again on 2020 thanks very much and good to be with you Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.